So, Chitza, welcome back. Thank and, you. And uh, I want to talk, we've talked a lot about your healing, um, but there is something else, isn't there, that you're very passionate about um, and would like to share with us. Can you uh, reveal that now? In my spare time, Glenn, I just love to write novels. Wow. Cool. And um, I've been doing that f since the beginning of the 80s, and I've been published in the Netherlands in my native Friesian language. And about six, seven years ago, I started to write in English and uh, self-published a trilogy of novels. And when you arrived this morning, I was sitting outside at a picnic table in the sun overlooking the valley of Finton River and writing my next thick historical novel playing thousands of years ago in this area. So do you, have, do you have with you now what you've been writing? I'm sure we'd love to hear it. Let's hear what you've written or some of it. The last few paragraphs of what I wrote this morning, so this can't be hotter from the press than what it is. Wonderful. That goes like this. The birds kept singing. The four nodded and tried not to give in to the temptation of slumber. The eight knew from experience how to stay awake and alert despite the tiredness and despite the boredom of waiting for an undefined period prior to an equally undefined succession of events. The birds kept singing. The eight heard and saw nothing to arouse suspicion. The four heard amidst abundant bird song. A soft and determined whisper hissed at one of the drafty corners. To say that he was startled was an understatement. To say that he was shocked, ditto. In a flash the three looked at the queen, the one in charge, the one in authority, however much she often despised the role. And when the whisper repeated itself there could be no mistake. Your Grace, let me in, Your Grace, had been the first whisper. And the second let me in, Your Grace. I have news. The woman in authority let out a deep sigh of relief on hearing the second and recognizing the voice. She tried to smile and failed at the attempt in too intense a situation. Also her reply came in a whisper, first addressing the three companions, then a touch louder to invite the men. The vagabond of Deeside has arrived with tidings. May they be favorable. Come in, dear friend. Your arrival has never been more welcome. He crawled underneath the tent cover and stood in the midst of four women who gazed at him as if he was a legendary and rarely ever seen water horse of Loch Ness. The man was dressed in the unrecognizable long coat he'd been presented with during his last forest visit. Delicate needlework hung in threads and not just the hems of sleeves were torn. The deep red crimson had turned into the indistinguishable shade of a garment worn too long and too often without seeing water or soap. Hair, skin, nails, the vagabond's overall appearance didn't change. From close by, the women noticed his parasitic beasties having a way over time. Disgust and gratitude were present in all four. The latter had the upper hand. Anything better than stifled silence of the secretive inactivity during the waiting game at the mercy of the unfoldment of events south of the D. How come the guards fail to notice you? The slithering of an adder through heather is rarely spotted by a human, Your Grace. That's what I wrote this morning when you arrived. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. You're very welcome. Wow. And can we stop here and blow my nose? <laughs> blow your nose. <laughs> All these human things. Chitza. You've also written um, a book, one book, I think it is, or you're, you're working on other books, aren't you, mm -hmm. in relation to your healing practice. And one in particular, which, um, which I've read and I think is, is quite wonderful, is, I don't know if you can see that on screen, it's called Cancer, A Healer's Perspective. And this was written by um, Chitza, how long ago? Um, 2011. 2011 five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. So tell us, Chitza, how this came about. It came about basically through my work and through, in my perception, not enough positive messages being around and going, doing the works in the world. We got a subtitle, 
is insights, stories, and messages of hope. And that's exactly what it's supposed to be. And when they hear from people who read it or have read it, it is exactly that what it invites people to have more. Hope, positivity mm. of a good outcome mm. in whatever shape or form. Mm. Now, I understand you're not actually allowed to say that you can help people with cancer. Is that right? Due to legality and the Cancer Act 1939 in the UK, I cannot comment on this. Mm. And just for your information, people watching, um, the Cancer Act in the UK prohibits the advertisement of um, offering of treatment for cancer um, and um, various other things too. It might be worth actually reading the section out because <clears throat> um, I'd never heard of it myself until uh, Chitza mentioned it when I first um, spoke to him. And also... Um, as an ex-lawyer, <laughs> you would think that I might not be aware of it. It wasn't particularly my area of expertise or, or subject matter in terms of the law, but um, it's actually worth knowing. And it says it prohibits the publication, this is the Cancer Act, Section 4, prohibits the publication of advertisement, an advertisement containing an offer to treat any person for cancer or to provide a remedy for or to give advice in connection with and then it defines advertisement as including any notice, circular, label, wrapper, or other document, and any announcement made orally or by any means of producing or transmitting sounds. And that's um, straight, from the, uh, straight from the Act. Now, so how does that affect you and your healing practice, uh, Chitza? It affects me in such a way that I cannot mention anything of this illness on brochures, business cards, website and the like. I cannot openly talk about it with people, so I cannot advertise in any shape or form. But then the proof is in the pudding, the grapevine does its work, the word of mouth works well, so basically I'm still after 22 years fully booked mm. week after week. Mm. Mm. It's interesting because I looked at Barbara's book, um, um, uh, Light Emerging, and I looked at all the references at cancer in there. The book was written some time ago, obviously, and that's America, not over here. Um, but she was also, it seems, very careful to, not to say that she treated cancer. She talked about working with clients and, and seeing cancer cells or malignant cancer disappear. And she also talked about... Um, facilitating, if I can put it that way, the release or the disappearance of a brain tumour. Um, so this is quite odd, isn't it? Do you think this is really for the greater good that this, this act exists when there are people in the world who seem to be helping, um, are able to help people with cancer in this way and yet can't actually say so expressly? It goes against the greater good. At the same time, it does protect people who have cancer or people who have friends, family members with cancer because basically quite often these kind of people are in a fear of state, uh, fear, a state of fear. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get an author to <laughs> the expression right. They are quite often in a state of fear and in that fear they can follow basically any kind of message or, 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 or direction that can bring the slightest sense of hope and positivity. Mm. So they can be abused, and that kind of misuse has been done often in the past by, by, by charlatans and, 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 and bogus claims. So to protect people from that is positive, mm. but therefore to hold um, other ways of healing, whether it is through substances or hand-on healing or whatever other shape or form of healing, to hold that in such a uh, vice, tightly restricted uh, law is absolutely not, not, not beneficial for the mm -hmm. people. Because, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. for example, in the 1920s, so 90 years ago, Dr. Rife from the San Diego University in California devised an, an, an electronic machine, put frequencies out, and he thought he could cure illnesses through that. Mm -hmm. 
through various hospitals, he was basically provided with 10,000 so-called terminally ill cancer patients right. 90 years ago. He cured about 90% of them within two months. Wow. And he then adjusted the frequencies of his machine slightly and therefore has been able to heal 100% of the cancer patients. Mm. Then his offices were, uh, well, first of all, he was uh, offered money to, 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 to patent the thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. He refused. Then his offices were broken into and everything has been destroyed. So that's basically 90 years ago. Mm. Yeah. There's now at the moment on Facebook also, again, an, an, a new series of, of, of people who indeed reinvent a similar machine. So it is all out there, mm -hmm. but the people are not allowed to know it. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is often painful to see and to watch when you can see the cure is out there, but it is not allowed to be mm -hmm. publicized. Mm -hmm. And why is that, do you think? Most likely because uh, people like myself or indeed Dr. Reif or uh, medicinal cannabis or whatever other shape or form of, of, of healing, they are not very good for the profit of the shareholders of the big pharmaceutical companies. Mm -hmm. So we're in the stranglehold of these multinational companies. Mm -hmm. They want to protect mm -hmm. it by all means. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with the petrochemical industry whereas in the 40s or 50s already cars have been invented who, which could run on water. Mm. Yeah? Mm. It's not good for the oil companies, so mm. crush it. Mm. Mm. And that's what you're up against. I don't know the story of Dr. Reif, but I am very familiar with a documentary um, which you can see on YouTube about another doctor, a medical doctor in the States called Dr. Bazinski, who um, invented, you might say, or created a cure for cancer and has had amazing success, including with the treatment of brain tumours. And, um, and he has had similar treatments, I understand it, to, to, to Dr. Reif. It is where he's been hounded by the, the establishment. Um, you know, for, for, for it seems no good reason other than to protect the vested interests, the powers that be, um, to continue the way they are, and yet he has found something that's given a lot of solace and a lot of comfort to a lot of people. Um, but anyway, that's something that you might have to, you might like to look up, uh, look up online. Um, but um, it's surprising, isn't it, um, um, Chitza, that you know when I see these things, it's like they hardly, hardly anyone knows about it, and and it's like there's 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 hardly any reports in the media or anything of these things going on, and yet for God knows how many years we've been looking for a quote-unquote, cure for cancer. And, and one wonders what actually is actually going on. Any comment on that? Basically, in my perception, and you might agree with this or not, but it is a whole establishment where the media, the press, the pharmaceutical company, most governments, dare I say it, <laughs> uh, the petrochemical industry, insurance companies, banking system, all this kind of big money, and it's not millions, but billions, yeah, all these kind of big money kind of companies and institutions, they protect the whole system mm. the way it is. Mm. They keep it in the stranglehold so that people still need the oil and the petrol, people still need the medication of the mm. pharmaceutical company, mm. they still need to use the banks, etc. etc. Mm. Yeah. So there's a vested interest in keeping things like chemotherapy, Absolutely. radiotherapy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah and surgery, I guess, to some extent, which yeah. are the three yeah. so-called established treatments for yeah. cancer. There was one medical doctor, this is a Facebook story, so whether it's true or not, but no, it was also in the newspaper, so it might be true, it might be not true, but a medical doctor in the USA who prescribed uh, chemotherapy and radiotherapy to his patients, and in the USA, because it's not an NHS system, they all get money for that, yeah? Mm -hmm. So he made himself, an, as an individual, a fortune of $67 million. And but the people he, were, he was treating didn't even have cancer, is that right? And some of them had cancer, some of them did not have cancer. Well, So that's big money. Unbelievable. Yeah? yeah. Okay, he's been caught out. That's called then a charlatan, but yes. he was a medical doctor. <laughs> yes. So he was allowed to do it, actually, because he was a medical doctor. Right. Yeah? But he gained a fortune. 
at the expense of people who are in this very vulnerable, very fearful position of having yeah. a so-called terminal illness. Let's talk about cancer in a, in a slightly wider context. What would you say is the connection, if any, between cancer and self-esteem? All that is love can heal everything. And when there is not enough self-esteem in people, they don't love aspects of themselves. They make aspects of themselves uh, less positive, they judge them as negative, etc., etc. And therefore, they basically stop that energetic flow. They create their own block in the mind, in the way of thinking, in the mindset, which then in turn, as a mental concept, as a mental negative affirmation, affects the third chakra, the solar plexus, for example, um, which is a mental chakra. And it affects a third level of the aura in correspondence with the third chakra, uh -huh. which is the mental level of the aura. Uh -huh. If these kind of messages all from the mental mind are negative, you create blocks in the aura, in the chakra, and therefore this universal energy doesn't come through. To stay with your question of self-esteem, Glenn, uh, and the third chakra, the solar plexus that rules and runs the digestive system. Mm. So these people can most easily get illnesses, depletion of energy in that physical area, mm. in the digestive system. So they might get more prone to stomach ulcers. They might be more prone to liver disease. They might be more prone to uh, cancer of the colon, etc., etc. Mm. Indigestion uh, and, and all these kind of illnesses, which starts quite often very small and innocent, yeah, and can slowly over the years, when not detected or when not taken care of, can slowly develop into more mm. serious illnesses. Mm. Mm. I read once that um, um, very strong emotions like repressed anger have a potential effect on creating cancer. Is, is that true in your experience? They have an effect on every illness, not just cancer. Mm. And suppressed anger is the same as any other suppressed emotions. Anything that is suppressed is blocked. The mm. suppression, the word says it. It is, it is stagnated, it is blocked, it is compressed, suppressed. Yeah? So everything is compressed and suppressed, no energy comes through there anymore. And we are energetic beings. We are physicalized energetic beings. Therefore, we need to maintain that flow of life, that flow of energy, and then we are happy, contented, energized, widely active human beings. Mm. If we interfere with that, then somehow along the line, we stagnate. Mm. And it mm. can be through compressed anger, it can be through compressed, suppressed grief, it can be anything. Mm. 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 So we need to own what we feel and find ways to allow ourselves to express it. Mm. If you look at yesterday, yesterday when at a day of four clients, normal working day, uh, for example, the woman who lives abroad and she, for the first time, although she was very scared of it, was allowing herself to enter her state of anger. Anger mm. induced by her parents, by restriction, by society, by whatever other means. Yeah. So, in our civilized world, anger is not the done thing, as one says in English. Yeah. So we hold it back, we suppress it, people are scared of it, it can be destructive, it can be deemed as aggressive, all that kind of stuff. So in this safe environment of this room, and under my guidance and protection, she allowed herself to enter her anger. Mm. My God, Glenn, did she let go of her anger. <laughs> yeah? And that is why this room has got double, double glazing, quadruple glazing, to keep the sounds in so neighbors don't ring the police. So they, have a, they have a safe environment to express what they need to express, mm. yeah? which is to me one of the sacred things of healing to express what needs to be expressed mm. in a safe environment. So afterwards, this woman, mid-40s, she was totally shaky, totally trembling, and totally, <sighs> her mouth corners had widened, her spine had widened, she breathed much more freer and easier, she was really simply much more fuller of life. And to see that result after 
basically only 15, 20 minutes of work. It's just brilliant. Now, are there any parts of the body or any organs in particular that once cancer or malignant cancer reaches that part of the body, is there any part of the body or any organ where it's impossible to um, hmm. to release the cancer? Ah, Glenn, you know what? I don't believe in the world in, in the word impossible because people quite often say, "Well." Doctor has given me the, the, the prognosis of maybe three months to live, it's the end of the life, it's the end of whatever, and I'm getting skin over bone, I'm totally thin, I'm losing all vitality, I'm losing all anything, yeah? So there must be no cure for me anymore. Which is most of the time untrue, which does not mean that I can cure these people, absolutely not, not by a long shot. But um, one woman in Findhorn, I can talk about it easily on public because she's given a talk about that in our Findhorn Foundation Universal Hall here. Mm -hmm. And it is on YouTube. This is Sylvia Black. Sylvia is it? Black, yeah. yeah, yeah. She gave a talk for about half an hour in the Universal Hall during the Love Magic Miracle Conference a few years ago in, in Findhorn. And basically, she tells of her whole journey through cancer. And it was for me the first person I supported during the whole process. And it was just awesome. But at some point, Glenn, she was totally skin of her bone. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, and, and, and she had to be carried into, into her house, not this house, previous house in Forest. She had to be carried into her house, made a downstairs room into a treatment room to, to, so she didn't need to go up the stairs. And what happened, when she lay in front of me on a treatment couch, I saw her lower three chakras, her lower three energy vortices disintegrating. I saw the lower three levels of her aura, of her energy field, disintegrating. And Barbara Brenner had spoken about that at some point during our fourth year, our graduation year, 2001 Miami, and said, if you see that, then stop treating them. Because if you start to restructure then the chakras, other lower levels of the field, then you will prolong the agony, you prolong their life. Oh. Okay, fair enough, fair comment. Don't want to prolong anybody's suffering. Yeah, oh. But my guides, these uh, all-knowing people in the light who, ser who served me, they boomed into my ear, restructure. Okay, bye-bye, Barbara. <laughs> Bless you. And I restructured and restructured and restructured. It was a long session, it was an intense session. And now at the moment, it's kind of about 10 years later, mm -hmm. Sylvia is walking the Camino. She is playing tennis and coaching tennis. She's going to Wimbledon and, and everything. So she is totally alive and is a picture of alive. And beautiful. So that is, and that was my first client whom I supported in depth on her journey. Mm. And um, that has given me the faith that even at the very last stages of healing, of, 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 of illness, healing can occur. Mm. Mm. And that has been so paramount for me in holding indeed this positivity, this positivity, this positivity. At any moment, in any illness and disease, it can be turned around, mm. which is awesome. Is there an alternative then to chemotherapy and radiation? There are alternatives, yes. Um, and fortunately, through the social media of, of, for example, Facebook and Twitter, we get to hear more about it, mm. because through normal media, the, 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 the written press, radio, TV and whatever else, we quite often don't hear it because they quite often serve a certain purpose and they serve a certain establishment. Mm. Through the social media, where anybody can almost put anything on the social media, so they also hold a lot of untruths, bless it, yeah. Um, basically, we also get to hear about the things we would never other, otherwise hear about. Right including people like uh, the doctor you mentioned in the States, which is yeah. well. including the technical device that Dr. Rife created 80 years ago, including the benefits of uh, medical marijuana, etc. So mm -hmm. there's a lot going on over there right. in the outside world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And therefore, what I really recommend people to do when they face any kind of serious illness, inform yourself, inform yourself, go to a nutritionist, Go to uh, Google and get any information you can from any source and inform yourself because 
when you gain more awareness, you can make conscious choices. Mm -hmm. And when you have no awareness, you can make no conscious choice. And you basically allow yourself to be pre-programmed by what the people in authority tell you to do. Mm -hmm. And that's in this, great, in this case quite often the medical profession. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that is potentially, is it not, the, the problem um, that people think that they have no choice. Yeah, exactly. And people are people receive that dilemma. People receive that stark message quite often. Sorry, there's nothing more we can do. Yeah. Which for the medical profession might be true. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't say that the doctors are yeah. are lying in it. Absolutely not. Not by a long shot. Yeah. For what they can offer, they are at the end of the lane. Yeah. yeah? For, for 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 the the cure of the, of, of the patient. At the same time, there are other possibilities. Mm. And saying that you only have so many months to live is not healing, is it? It is a uh, pretty stark contrast to healing. Yes. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Can I just um, ask then, um, what would you say or, or what advice can you give, if you can give any advice, as to how one would avoid getting cancer if that's possible. Hmm. What would you say about prevention? Be happy. Go forth and be happy, as it says in the Bible. My Bible. Right, <laughs> perfect. Um, and it sounds simple, but it isn't simple. Because people are programmed, people are conditioned, people out of fear of being abandoned, they want to stay in the tribe, they want to remain part of their family, circle, they want to remain part of their friends circle, they want to be pa remain a part of their colleague circle. So therefore they kind of stay in this job, in this family constellation, in the circle of friends, although from deep inside they will not know, they, they will know and realize that somehow they are unhappy with the life situation. Mm. But to have the courage to step out of that can be big. Mm. And of course over here in Infinton, this spiritual community of ours, we have a lot of people who step out of normal society and embrace a new kind of life, a more fulfilling kind of life, which quite often makes people more happy. And therefore, they are more in the flow of life. And when they're more in the flow of life, the whole energy and vitality increases. Mm. And their chakras, energy points, spin stronger, drawing energy in. Mm and the aura becomes bigger and stronger and, and, and serves more as a buffer zone between them mm -hmm. and any negativity out there. So they basically have a stronger immune system. Mm -hmm. And is there a, an underlying message that you feel you could give maybe to people out there at the moment who are either suffering from cancer or know someone who is, maybe a relative, maybe a friend, could be anyone. Um, is there anything that you can say about that? So much. How many hours have you got? Right? Yeah. How many hours? <laughs> There's so much we can say about that. But first and foremost, as I said earlier, inform yourself of other possibilities, mm. of all possibilities, to indeed make yourself healthy again. And then look back on your life. Look back at your life and notice what have I not been allowed to do in life or what have I not allowed myself to do in life because I want to be somehow accepted by society mm. and I don't want to live outside the box. And then do the opposite. Do the things that you always dreamed you wanted to do. You've got this wonderful phenomenon of the bucket list. Yeah? Yeah? Well, do your bucket list before you're going to die, for heaven's sake. Yeah? <laughs> yes. Because otherwise it's too late. Then you kick the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> so, indeed, do the opposite from what you have been taught and told not to do. Mm. Be daring. Because that daring courage gives you inspiration because then at some point at, at the end of the day you can say wow I've done that wow I've achieved that never thought in my life I would be able to do such a thing and look I've done it good on me yeah that kind of enthusiasm that's what you need in people beautiful and then it hold uh, that held backness that people are growing up with and being raised with is such a disease bringer mm. wonderful Jitsa for the moment, thanks again very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.